Welcome to the Sun and Power Night Sessions, Saturday Night Sessions. It was a surprise to me to do this live stream because I want so much to test this telescope. I will place it outside, but I was working on, on, uh, on it. Because before dinner, I dinner already, before dinner, I had an opportunity and I say, okay, I will test it right now. I test it already, it works very well, but I got two problems that I want to share with you. And we will go to that in a, in a minute and then we'll place outside. I didn't have time to place it outside. It was so fast. Hello team, Steve, dumb guy, Sergio. <laughs> This was a surprise. Okay, let me show you. So, first I will show you the, the picture. I took, I had only 10, 15 minutes, so I took 10 minutes off. I did a live stack with 10 minutes. I didn't have time for anything. I will show you. The first picture with this refractor, a 72 ED. Where is it? So many folders now with telescopes. Oh, I, I have, uh, of course, I don't have a, a folder with images. It's the first one. I will show you. 10 minutes. 10 minutes with a refractor. Before dinner. Where is it? Ah, it's here. I have to post-process it. It's not processed. We'll do it right now. You see, it was before dinner, hold on. The Ors had nebula and um, the flame nebula and this NGC. This is the image. This was my first image. This is because of the rotation. This is a, an Altezimut mount, the Dobsonian mount that I'm using. No darks, uh, no Ma darks matching this well I have to do darks so I have hot pixels everywhere okay but th this was only a test before dinner and my wife was almost calling for dinner and also you can see without a flat um, a flattener a field flattener or comma or um, reducer we can see distortions at the edges, just at the edges. For someone that is used to focal reducers, I will... You see? Distortions at the edges. Like uh, the ones, well, not so, so hard as the ones that we have with a cheap focal reducer and the Dobsonians, but it has. I will pr post process this in a moment. You can see that it's very nice, very nice for large field, but the best is yet to come. First problem I had, you told me that it's only to insert the camera, the 294 and straight away, but it was not like that. It was not, I had to add a, a, an extension and then it didn't work. I had to add another extension to make it this work and it with two extensions it was um, so large the distance from the the telescope focuser to the camera and i get, had the second problem and the huge problem here which is with the distance the camera touch the um, the base so it's dangerous because I don't want, if uh, for some reason the telescope goes to, to, the, um, to the zenith, it will touch in the camera and we don't want that. So what I did before the live stream, I was doing that. I changed this a bit. I moved the, the, the best I could with uh, touching, changing the rings. And I had to drill um, a hole here but it's not finished so I will be fixing this it's only a bit of distance look you see it's like one thing one finger the distance to the base 
and it will be fixed tomorrow during the day because the holes on the Vixen, the Vixen dovetail, I had to, to drill a hole, but uh, it has to be with uh, a second hole for the screw to go all in and stay flat the surface. So that's a problem if you ever think in using a refractor, at least with this size. I, I believe that a red cat or something will not have that problems. I don't know those problems. But at least with this refractor, and I, I'm sure that almost all refractors will have this problem with this mount, the Dobsonian Virtuoso mount. So it's easy to fix, but you have to drill the Vixantel and it's a, a thing that it's easy. Now the, the best part. I tried the Nexus Focal Reducer Comma Corrector from my Newtonians in this telescope and it worked very, very well. Look, I, I didn't have the time and it was, uh, it were coming clouds, but I just took a, a snapshot of the stars and I will show you for you to see, look. This was with the, without the stars on the Nexus. You see the stars at the corner? And now with the stars on the Nexus, look at the stars. <laughs> All sharp and round. So I discovered something that I didn't know. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. You see the stars? All round at the edges and uh, everywhere with the stars on the Nexus. Amazing. Amazing. I didn't see anybody doing this using a stars on the Nexus in a refractor. There's no information in the internet probably because nobody did it. But I did it and it's amazing. The stars on the Nexus, the comma corrector and focal reducer of the Newtonians and designed specifically for Newtonians telescopes work on this refractor. So I believe it can work with other refractors. So now I will be using like that. Another problem was because I can't use an extension because of the distance. So what I do is something like we do in the, the Virtuoso telescope, the Dobsonian, which is not using any extension, extension at all and pull the, the imaging train until I get the, more or less the focus and lock and then just fine tune with a focuser. Exactly what I do with a 6 inch virtuoso telescope with the sliders that we adjust more or less to get in focus and then we fine tune with a, that stupid focuser that is helicoidal and a bit silly but this one is good, it's a double speed so it's, it's very nice. I also uh, turn the, the, the telescope in a way that my my um, the focuser the wheels with a double speed wheel is easier to to manage like this not to the side and a bit up so i will be using like that it's another thing that is important i'm i'm telling you this right now because i will not talk about this anymore these were the problems that i faced and uh, i'm facing because i have to to solve the distance uh, tomorrow I will solve it in the afternoon and tonight I now I will place the telescope outside and we will be testing it I have only to be careful not to point to Zenit because like this it's not touching and it's almost on Zenit as you can see here you see so the telescope very nice the stars very nice I'm getting used to focus these and then we will pro process them the other image. Salted Wasabi, hello. Rao, hello. David, too loco. Bacon. <laughs> Dobsonian Refractor. <laughs> Astro Womble, Sergio. Can you add or find a shorter adapter that will fit? I have those adapters. The problem is. Any adapter has um, a locking, a stop ring. And uh, I need the, um, all the imaging train to go into the focuser. 
a bit because if I have if I have any extension or adapter it will stop and will force me to have more outward focus and I don't want more than this this is the minimum this is the minimum that I can get inside the focuser if I ins if I insert the um, all the all, all of this more into the focuser I will lose the the focus and uh, I don't want to to take it off because of the distance because this says this problem I'm I'm uh, limited by this the distance to the base and I don't want to buy another vixen tail uh, dovetail I will use this I will manage to to fix this to use as is and now I will place it outside hold on a bit And as you can imagine, I'm not using any finder scope and I'm roughly, uh, I don't, I'm not aligning. I, I will polar align, but roughly polar align. It's just to test, but we need to, to decide first what to watch because this is a large field and now there are not large nebulae. Those were before dinner. They are gone. The, the the Orion constellation now is not very well visible. So we need to choose. Yes, yeah, Sergio, this is a, a very simple. I'm just explaining then because I use I will use this in the future in a video with photos that I I took for the people that don't know. We need to decide. I had no time to. The moon is still down. What do we do we have for large field? Uh, the Leo constellation, the, the triplet. No? The triplet and we have the triplet over the moon. And we have uh, Virgo still low. It's better to go to the triplet while it's on, on a good position. No? Astro okay, those stars look great. Yeah, they look. It was amazing. I just test it because just in case. Just in case. If it didn't work, I knew and okay, it didn't work. This is a, a, fo a focal reducer designed for Newtonians. It's, it's okay, it didn't work. But it worked very well, very well. <laughs> so the people that has already it's it's weird because Mazif that has a, a star is on an extra and more people, some of you have, and you have refractors. I think Mazif has a, a refractor. I, I'm, I, unfortunately, it's not here. He is not here. Can you try capture a red? Ra no, this this live stream is for large field. The red large this has no no power to go deep in the in the. Um, in the sky, this is for large fields. If I know someone with a 3D printer to make me a spacer, I don't need, I have spacers. The spacers don't work. If I, any spacer that I have here will do anything. If it has not the locking ring, it will be like, uh, like it was. It, it will not work. The spacer will move, will force the, all the imaging train. The spacer with a locking ring or anything like an extension that will stop there will force all the imaging train to go outwards and I can't. I can't go more than this. I want to go in, not out. So to go in, the only solution is not having any stop and go inside the focuser without any, anything stopping the imaging train. 
So I can add spaces, but it will not do nothing but vignetting probably because uh, it's locking in the focal reducer. It's physics. Uh, these are the limitations of this, this setup and we, we figure it out and turn around, of course. Barnard's... Uh, no, here it's not. I have to do darks for it. It's crazy the difference with the comma corrector, says Astro Cave. I just got my bother comma corrector and the difference is huge, of course. Of course. Well. I think the Leo triplet, let me see. Is the best chance that we have. While the clouds are not here. The Mercurian cluster, no. Mm, slow, yeah. Yeah. Because the Leo will see them uh, small, but we'll see very well the three of them and we can have a, um, an idea. Okay, let's, let's connect the camera. And it's great to to work with a focal reducer because like that I just change the imaging train from telescope to telescope without having to to add anything because I, I use this imaging train the 294 with a focal reducer the status on the next in the Dobsonians so it will be great now I pointed in horizontal Below Polaris, more or less, with the eyes, because I, I didn't place the finder yet. I need uh, to wait for my Amazon order to arrive on Monday with the clamps, the plastic clamps. And uh, I need to connect to the, the UPS. But I'm not worried about the polar alignment. Or so. Now, first, connect. Wi-Fi. I'm connecting my Wi-Fi. And now I will open SceneScan application. Let me do like this for you to see. Scene scan, which is the application of the 16 inch Virtuoso. See? Connect. Mm -hmm. Now, what I do is like this. One star alignment. The lazy way. I find Polaris. Here, Polaris. Begin. Bam. It, it will lift, but not enough to, to touch with the camera in the base. So it's safe. The Flaming Star Nebula, now it's not on site. I, I image it before the stream. I will process the, the image. Now I have to connect the camera. The shark cap open. 
And focus. I forgot to focus. Which is the, the worst part, it's like the virtuoso, the worst part is to focus. Well, it's more or less there, you see? The advantage will be that every time I place the Serizon X with a camera and after I, I manage everything with a, the dovetail, it will be always the same position. So, I will mark the position and then every time will be like this, I will insert the Serizon X in that mark over the, the focuser and then I just go outside and fine-tune you see now I think Polaris it's here at the right it's the larger one so I will I know already the position of the camera but they it's not moving to the right it's moving up something I have to rotate the camera because I like to move the, the arrows. Uh, it was because I was messing with uh, the rings, everything. Yeah, it should be Polaris, that one. It's such a large field that we can see Polaris. I'm not worried, because I can play it solve with my technique, with the Dobsonians, and that, that's it. Okay, I will say OK, and now, I will say it's a line, and now, what I'm going to do is to focus. And this is the worst part, hold on. Okay. Let's stretch a bit see from outside I think it's more or less, I will not complicate because I'm not used to this I'm used to the Dobsonians and the stars are, are bigger <laughs> in the Dobsonian these are small, small stars I will not complicate the Heart Nebula in Cassiope, it's not on site the problem is that now it's not, um, it will be later, but right now, Cassiopeia, it's, it's behind me. No, 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 let me see. No. Where is it, Cassiopeia? It's not on site, yeah, it's not on site. It was a good nebula for that. It will be in the next year. So let me see if the go-to works first. Let's tell him to go, let me see. Because if I need, I played solve. The Leo triplet is the... Um, better see like this. M65. Control one, in case we need the... I have always... That's why I don't connect the the Virtuoso and this one to Stellarium, because I have... I like to have Stellarium connected to this virtual plate solver, so I can use with the Dobsonians, with all my telescopes, as a backup. You see? Let's see how it works. I... This is the... 
12 inch, if it was a 12 inch world will be like this. And this is now with an Nexus and um, this telescope, you see how tiny they will be. Let's see how high of, of God, not yet. <laughs> you ask me only things that I don't have on site. Now, let's say M65, no? Deep Sky, 65. This is different from the, the Dobbs. Enter, go to. Leo Triplet, okay. Let's see what he does. Just please don't go more than that. I have fear, I go outside, I have fear that it gets wrong and touch the camera. No, but it's almost. Tomorrow I will fix that. It's a question of drill. The Vixen do dovetail. Well, I don't see nothing, you see? I will plate solve. You see why I want to, to have this? I do the plate solve and that's it. Look, plate solve. Plate solve. I love this, this technique as a backup. It will not be so far. Solving. I'm choosing the Leo triplet. It's solved, let's see the... It's near, of course. Okay, now what I do is move a bit. I forgot to turn the camera. Okay. I think I'm watching. I'm, I'm, you see, I'm touching the, the right the arrow to the right, to the movement to the right, and it's moving down, a bit down. This is because the camera is rotated. It's not well positioned. To move to the left, I have to touch this button. With the Dobsonian, it's much easier to find the faint galaxies. Oh, I'm watching one here at the bottom. Hold on. I should rotate the camera. Come on. I will have to live stack. Then confirm that is well positioned because I can't see the, th the all the three galaxies with this telescope, they are so tiny. This is a telescope for wide fields only. Okay, I will just live stack a bit, just to... Four seconds to be faster. Just to see where the... the galaxies are. I do like this, like this, and they will pop. When it's here, When it's here, should be the hamburger. Let me see on Solarium. No, but this is not horizontal. Uh, yes, because of the camera. The camera is is not is not rotated. I I like to have the camera like this in this position, so I can match what I'm watching in the screen with what I'm watching in Solarium. But if I rotate the camera, I will have to refocus. Here another one. Okay, let's... Um, let's cancel. Yeah, I will do like that. I will rotate a bit the camera. Hold on. 
This is challenging for the first time. Let's see now. To the right. And it goes up. It's worse. <laughs> you see, now it's out of focus. To the right still goes up once I I figure it out the position of the right position of the camera I will never have this problem again this is the first time Again, up. Right now it's it's better. Just a bit more. Now as I have a sticker in the camera to the right almost As I have a sticker, now I know the next time I, I touch the camera, I insert the camera, I know the position. It will never happen again. Just a bit more. Okay, now I have to refocus.
You see, it's very hard. Look, the three galaxies by luck. Here at the middle. <laughs> here are the galaxies. One, two, three. It's very hard because I'm outside at a distance. Oof. And I can't see... With the Dobsonian, I'm... My references are... First, they are bigger, the stars. And then we have the, the four spikes, star spikes. Well, four or, or, or three or six or three or whatever. The spikes of the star. And I can, I have enough vision to, from outside to, to control that. With this refractor, the stars are so small that is very. I sometimes I make a movement and it seems that they didn't change, but they changed. So what I'm thinking right now came to my mind is that this telescope is perfect to use with a, an autofocuser, as I have in the 12 inch, which allow me. Not a, a complicated one, not as air and expensive. A simple autofocuser, as I have in the, the, the 12 inch, with this, this remote, it will allow me to be here with you, but with a screen here, I can control very well, because here I can see very well. So it will be an inexpensive uh, accessory to add to this refractor. Until now, I'm managing the things without buying anything. By luck, the stairs on the Nexus that I use tried with, uh, with this refractor and the stairs on the Nexus is from the Newtonians. It worked very well. You can see the stars are all round and sharp until the edges, all. Now let's control the backlash because the Virtuoso Mount has a bit of backlash. Let's see... No, it stopped already. And now I can. I have to, to do darks for more exposure time because this can be... The Virtuoso Mount... I will do 10 seconds, but the Virtuoso Mount can go further more than 10 seconds. We will have to deal always with the rotation, but... Apart from the rotation, look, the, the, the galaxies. Apart from the rotation, it handles very well the tracking of this Dobsonian base. It tracks very well for the 30 seconds, which will be the threshold because of, of that rotation. Now the color and the stretch, and bam! Photobombed here. Okay, let's clear the satellite. It's a problem with refractors, of course. It's like going fishing with a, a, a huge net. <laughs> you will capture everything. I think this is a satellite. But that's okay, I will cut it. You see, I think I could be... I could have the focus uh, a bit better. I do like this, as usual. Now, let's control this. Still noisy. Well, remember that we still have thin clouds and I'm not using darks. I have to do darks for this, for this field of view. For this setup, you see the odd pixels. I have here a feature we can try. I don't know if it. I have to reset the stack. Remove satellite trails, no. Background subtraction. Blended gradient, no. Where is it? the odd pixel stuff. I sh showed that to you once and now I don't know where is it. 
incredible. If you don't enjoy troubleshooting, you won't enjoy astronomy. Of course, and this is, is nice to figure it out. When I, I placed the refractor and, and I saw ooh, the camera will we'll, we'll bump on the telescope, it will not work. I have to figure it out. Where are the, the odd peaks? Ah, in the darks. Subtract darks. Then I go here. Odd pixel removal only. Okay. And now I will clear. Let's see if it works. It was full of odd pixels. I have to do darks for this. Let's see. I think it worked. Okay, the histogram is out of... It worked. You see, one thing that you can do, I told that already, but I don't use it usually. If you don't have darks or you didn't you don't know yet how to how to take darks, well, you have a good video about it in, in my a tutorial, a simple tutorial, small. You can use as a, an alternative. You go here on subtract dark. I will try to remember where it is, where is it by, where it is by, by this thing. I want to subtract darks, I will replace the darks from, for the odd pixels. And it's here, in the darks. And you choose odd pixel removal. But I don't like the gradient now, and it was not here. And I don't know if it's any cloud. If it's due on the lens of the telescope, or if it's a consequence of the odd pixel removal, and not using my darks. Oh man! There's always something, something. If you notice every live streams, I have always something to deal with. Yeah, I think I prefer my small odd pixels. Let's see, let's see if now it's better with my darks. Let's see. It's, it was because of the feature of the odd pixels removal. 10 seconds and then I will increase the exposure. I think it was. I think it was. Let's see. If no bands form now, the issue, the source, the source was the odd pixel removal. Let's see. But now we have odd pixels. Look, one green here, small, another red, another one here, and they start to ping, ping, ping to. To extend the dots with the, the tracking but no bands so far so my solution for this will be this is the first time I, I picked this telescope remember that my solution for this will be to take darks I can do it after we start a bit Yeah, no, no bands, no strikes, you see? Hmm, interesting. I prefer to not to use those features. To use only my darks and that's it. The vignetting is soft. It's noisy, of course, it's noisy, but that's because of the, um, the seeing. I bet we have clouds, let me check. Let me check. Uh, we will have uh, better weather for next week. Good. I think now these live streams we will 
use this telescope until I... It's a new toy. You see, thin clouds. They are thin. Yeah, I can't see them with my eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thin clouds here. That, those kind of clouds that we can't see, naked eye. But they mess. I have the seeing also here. Seeing. Seeing. Moon 85% is, is rising. Arc second, 179. It's better than yesterday. Yesterday was 2.45 or something like that. And now is it was awful. Um, but even like that, we could uh, do a session <laughs> with less quality, of course, much less quality. And we saw Ceres, the planet, the dwarf planet. Amazing, amazing. Is there anybody there? Uh, who knows? Well, 179, it's better. And it will be better along the night, of course. Okay. Photobombed, again, right here uh, on my the core of the image. Now, I will show you the first image and only image that I... Well, it was a live stack and I... I took a snapshot and that's it. It's not processed, but, but I will process it now. This was the stars, no, not this one, it's this one, okay, it was here. Thank you, Kaza Quasar, for the super chat. Super chat. Super chat. Good evening, please give a like to support Tiago. Thank you, thank you. Yes, the like is free. The like is not like the super chat. The like is free. So I appreciate a lot. Thank you, thank you. So you can see here that we have the effect of the rotation at the top and the distortions because here I didn't uh, know yet that the stars on the Nexus was going to work. Look at the stars here at the, at the edges, you see? This is what you can expect, the distortion you can expect at the edges with this telescope. That's why they buy the, the flattener, the field flattener and focal reducer, you see? But it's only at the, at the edges. And now, this was before dinner. Now I will, first I will crop. This is not processing. First I will crop. To cut just a bit here. Just the, the effect of the rotation. Okay, I will save as a copy. And now, up here. And now. Okay. And now I will open it in, as usual, in Topaz de Noise. Crank down the strength and the detail to the minimum. Okay. 
clean the noise. It's what uh, just what I want. It's just to clean the noise. I don't want to to distort the the natural image and add artifacts. This is a, a software that we have to use with caution. Otherwise, it will do worse than than the than we want. Now I close and let's see. So this was the first picture. Parcel and flame. Seventy two ED. Amazing. I'm very happy with this new telescope so far. Beside um Despite those those problems, I have to create a folder. Hold on, new folder. Seventy-two ED. The first picture. <laughs> now let's open it. And here it is, the first picture I took with. This was 10 second exposures and it was only 10 minutes. Now, I, uh, from now, I will not have these distortions at the edges, like the focal reducers that we use in the Dobsonian, so it will be much better. But so far, so good. For 10 minutes exposing, exposure, so far, so good. I miss the the diffraction spikes here of the dog. I love it on the stars. That's a personal preference. Some people don't like it. Others like, like me. But you see, the purpose of this telescope is to capture the wide field. And with the Dobsonians, even with an Exus, it's very hard to capture such a, an area. If it wasn't because of the, my dinner and the clouds coming, I would increase the exposure and would um, leave a bit more, maybe 20 minutes stacking and watching this farming. I was watching this, I was wildlife stacking, I was watching this and it was amazing to see all of this, this part of the nebula starting to, to pop. This, this little one, the NGC all also, and the shape of the head, this is a hot pixel inside the head, and the shape of the head of the horse, uh, very nice. And here it was straight away, the, the details here were in the flame, is so powerful, the flame nebula. And here a bit of nebulosity, but so far so good. I like it. There's a, a huge difference with uh, this refractor optics to, and it's a cheap refractor because it costs only about, um, I have it here. The best price right now for United States, it's on Amazon. No, this is on AstroArt Finland, this is for for uh, Europeans and it's my sponsor always check my sponsor very reliable very very reliable T an excellent team many people here bought from them and confirmed that and they have good prices to Europe and especially check the shipping prices because they have good shipping prices to Europe Europe and United Kingdom and to United States it's on Amazon. Yeah, 449. You see? Amazon. You you buy you receive fast and um, but it's only the tool, not the the mount. 
Anybody that buy this telescope as is, it's only the two. You have you gotta have a mount or buy a mount. I have already this one from the Virtuoso, which I'm using. So nice picture, the first one. And it was on a rush. And now this one we have to control the color to get balance. Okay. See. And manage the histogram. Because of the clouds. Always the clouds. Not bad for a refractor. <laughs> Without processing, we are watching in real time the sky. In this case, it's the Leo triplet. These three beautiful galaxies, each one different than the other. And we are watching from the south of Portugal, or the south of Europe, on Portugal. Planet Earth, continent, Europe, country, Portugal, region, Algarve, 37 latitude, Bortle 5. And says to Locus, so, where is the horrible chromatic aberrations from the doublet that makes it mandatory to buy a $5,000 triplet? I don't see them. <laughs> Mm. Better shut up, me. I better don't, don't say nothing. And that's what we ca you can get from me here in this channel. My sponsor asked me, do you want a better one? Do you want a triplet or a better one? And I said to him, no, I want that one. The cheapest one that you have there. I get, I get a feeling that I can do beautiful things with it. And I want to, to do some magic with my live sessions for my audience. And he said, okay, fine, I will send you. So I could have, I swear this is true. I could have a much better telescope. And he asked me, do you want a mount? No, I want to use the, the telescope in the Virtuoso. Why did I act like that? Because of you. Because of you. Because I'm doing all of this to, for you. And the pleasure I will take from a better telescope will not surpass the pleasure that I have showing you with this telescope, 400 bucks, with a virtuoso mount and struggling with it and moving on. Call me stupid. It's like that. <laughs> and I think we have a small galaxy here. Let me check the magnitude to know. I'm learning this telescope, so we want to know what is capable of. Where is it? To the left. There are two, but we can see only one. One has 15 magnitude and another one at the left. 17 probably it's not this one that we are watching we are watching this so we can confirm that this 400 bucks refractor telescope with a dobsonian mount can capture a faint 15 15 magnitude galaxy of course nothing like the dob but just for the record 
Now, as the rotation affects a lot this telescope, we will, fortunately it has a light field, wide field, we will readjust the histogram just a bit. I, I can't push too much because of the, um, the clouds. I think like because of the clouds and it's affecting yeah, I can't push too much. I will do like this, then I will crop. Yeah, like this is fine. So we have 70 minutes of this beautiful Leo triplet. Now I don't have the problems of the, the equatorial platform because this, while the UPS has energy, it will supply it. I forgot to increase the exposure, but we can repeat it. Actually, we can do it right now. 10, 20, 20. Let's see what happens. And now, shark cap. Let's see, let's crop it. You see the rotation? It's clearly visible. This is the rotation. This doesn't happen with an equatorial mount, but it happens with the altezimut mount which is up and down, left and right, and of course, it doesn't rotate as an equatorial mount does. But we crop, we have so much field of view that we can crop easily. This telescope is for these large field of views. Okay, beautiful. Now I will save them. I will save here. Wheel. And now I will clean it. Just clean it. It's my astrophotography. We top as the noise. Again. Zoom out. The noise. We check the noise, the removal noise, and crank down to the minimum just to clean the noise, you see? Clean the noise. And it's very nice like that. Now I save it. My astrophotography work. See, one all day, one all day to post process the two days to post process this image. It takes time to process because I have loads of stuff. And here it is. Hey, this is the the clouds are are coming. You see? 400 bucks telescope. So that's with <laughs> with 
800 bucks. Now tell me that it's very expensive to go into astronomy. With 800 bucks, you get. With 800 bucks. You buy this telescope and you buy this telescope in the United States of America. And with 800 euros on Europe, you buy two telescopes also. This virtual zgoto and if you want wide field of view you buy this one for 400 bucks. Eh? Two telescopes for an, uh, 800 bucks. And if you add one more uh, in 18 inch knob, you get three telescopes for 1200 bucks, maybe. And if you have a camera, you can use the camera in every telescope. Well, these two the refractor and the virtuoso have go to so they have tracking the 18 inch if it's a classic one it doesn't have tracking you buy with a go to or use it without tracking but you can't do what we do here <laughs> let me check the shot that's what i like No, I can't see because you pay right now. Remember, this is the first time I grabbed this telescope and placed it outside to watch the sky. And it was before dinner, just 15, 20 minutes. And now, remember that. This ram is all over the place because of the... Um, Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I think we have clouds. Yeah. Now it's even worse. Yeah, this is, these are clouds. This is life. We can get. We can't get the detail that we get fr with uh, the Dobsonian. No way in these small targets. But we can get a decent detail. We can get a decent detail for large for wider fields without without doing much effort. Watching in real time. This is real time. Look the gradient. And the moon is already there, uh, of course. Let me check. Yeah. The moon is saying hello. Hello. I'm here. Hashtag new telescope problems. <laughs> Hashtag I figured it out. 
Hashtag Dobsonian Power Does Magic Live <laughs> Now this is a, an alternative For people that don't uh, know what to do with the money Instead of wasting that money in other things You buy a new telescope <laughs> yeah, best problems to have. I wish all the problems were like this. Oh, oh. another one. Here we go. I never had a Newtonian, but I'm scared of mirror collimation because my parents won't buy me. Helpers to collimate anyways. <laughs> Watch my video about collimation. You keep it simple. Nothing to scare about. Astrocade, I'm looking at getting a refractor too. My, girlfri my girlfriend told me she wants to set up her own imaging rig and Mazif as a nice refractor. He said he'd sell me. Well, Mazif is, is reliable. It's from our community, so... That's one uh, another advantage of our community. By the way, don't forget that you have uh, our community on Discord. I will place the link here, as usual. Where you can... It's free, of course. It's just to join. And where you can post your pictures in the community pictures any picture well any picture astro photography not the pictures well you can post pictures of you but not in the community pictures because I show the community pictures I show all the pictures there in the live streams not all live streams but yesterday for instance we were watching Look, it's here, on the chat. Join us on Discord. It's a great community, and growing. Well, well, well. Yes, you can. Mark asks, are we able to control the Virtuoso via SharpCap or other software? Or does it only work with SceneScan? You can, with any software. The reason I don't do that is because I want to have SharpCap linked only to my free push tool, my plate solving, virtual plate solving to fit all the, the telescopes. But you can use Stellarium, you can use Sky Safari. Actually, I used Sky Safari at the beginning to show you the first live streams with the Virtuoso. I linked, uh, I have the uh, in a video how to do that. I don't remember how, but when I, I did it, I recorded in a video. So you can perfectly connect it and I think it's not um, complicated what is the gradient trying new green magenta 3d technique <laughs> no, the gradient it's the moon mixed with the clouds and light probably all of that stuff it's a cocktail of uh, bad stuff.
Not yet. Not yet. The Sombrero Galaxy will be, but not yet. We will watch them all, don't worry. Is the tabletop virtuous wide field? Well, mm, yes and no. Depends on the camera you use. I will show you. You go here. This fits any telescope and any one of you. You go to dobsonianpower.com. Dobsonianpower.com. It's easy to remember. And you click on... I have here all my gear. Where to buy. Free resources. You click on free resources. Okay. And then at the top it has astronomy tools. You click. And it will open this website. You click on imaging mode. You choose a Messier. For instance, the Leo triplet. I think it's here. No. Yes, in the Leo triplet. The Leo triplet, for instance, that we are watching. Then you choose your camera. In this case, this is important. Is a ZWO294 in cameras. MC Pro. It's it's the same. It's only because it's cool it and my it's not. Focal length. The virtuosi is 750. Aperture 150. No beaming, no bar low, nothing. And then you click add to view. This is the view with a virtuoso. So you can see that you can fit all of these. You see? But now, comparing with, with this one that we are using, well, actually we are using with a focal reducer, but let's see if it's not. It's 420, I think, and uh, 72 aperture. I think it's like that. Let me confirm. Four hundred and fifty on AstroArt. Seventy-two, the same camera. Head to view. You see the yellow. The yellow is this refractor. But the eight inch is smaller than the Virtuoso, six inch, and the twelve inch even smaller. It's go deep. The Dobsonians with large aperture that I have are to go deep in the sky, especially with a 12-inch Dobsonian, which is powerful with large aperture, and we call it the King. The King! The king. And this one, the refractor, I got it for white field and other situations like the conjunctions that we can't fit everything and uh, large nebulae that we will have loads of them so I will use it for that Let me take this off. You see the gradient? The, and this is all over the place, the histogram. <laughs> Very hard now. Clouds. This is clouds. Thirty-five minutes. <laughs> 
so I can confirm this is the best refractor for beginners. But it's not the best telescope for beginners. The best telescope for beginners is this one, the Virtuoso. It's what I recommend for beginners. This one for wide fields. And especially because if I can do this with without post-processing a lot and with just a few minutes and with an altezimut mount like the Virtuoso mount, you can do it, anybody can do it with almost any mount. If you use an equatorial mount with this refractor, it will improve a lot your astrophotography, of course. So this use me as a reference. Well, I have uh, Bortal 5, but with clouds now. <clears throat> Amazing, no? Sigma clipping, yes, I'm using. I always use Sigma clipping. Of course. If you come here and like what you are watching, and you should because you stay here at least for a while, at least give it a like. It's free. Oh, I saw this already. And thank you for, for being here also, Nas. Hello, David. Hey, Mazif, it's in the house. <laughs> you talked about buying the, the refractor to Mazif and he listened. Yeah, you have the link pinned in the chat to Discord. Join us because it's a good community and healthy. Clouds on Netherlands. Arthur, we are, and for the ones that just join us, we are streaming from the south of Europe. Planet Earth. Continent, Europe, country, Portugal, region, Algarve, 37 latitude, Bortal 5. Hold on. was a mosquito they starting to to appear spring is coming yeah I mentioned that and it shows up of course well this is all messed up they are clouds yeah and the moon clouds and moon 
The moon is like uh, almost like the one that Madzif placed on this card. So tomorrow I will figure it out. I think it's it was a, a nice night to, uh, of testing the first test to this telescope. Thank you very much for being here. Have an awesome, awesome weekend, rest of the weekend. And I'll see you next week during the week in the, the night that uh, it's clear. Bye bye. Thank you.